MP to all cars. Armed robbery on security vehicle Julian now. Four to MP. All men. Of watch. All right, Dale, hold it there. Tully, take his mate in the other room. Yes, Sergeant. Come on, this way, Saunders. Come on. All right, all right. Now, Dale, in you go. <coughs> Sit down. All right, Billy. <sighs> Let's have it. Have what? What were you doing tonight? Me? Yeah, you. I was just talking to my friend, Mr Brooke. In an empty street at one o'clock in the morning, you meet to have a talk? We didn't meet there. We were on our way home. We were just finishing our talk. Outside a chemist's shop? We didn't notice it was a chemist's. Honest, Mr Brooke. We just stopped to finish our talk. He lives near there. Talking about what? About getting him a job. What? In a chemist's shop? Oh, come on, Mr Brooke. Leave it out. You want to make a statement? Put it on the record. W why? There's no need. If you want to play it your way, there's every need. Right, what time is it? 1.48. Name, William Dale. Home address, 15 Clayton Street. You see, I remember it, don't I? Yes, Mr Brooke. Now, what I want to know... Uh, I was wondering, Sergeant... Tully! You don't interrupt when I'm busy. You wait. Sorry, Sergeant. What is it? Well, I thought you might need me. I don't. But since you're here, you can stay. Now, close that door. Yes, Sergeant. All right, now, where were we? Yeah. <clears throat> it's one o'clock in the morning. Two lads who are not unknown to us stop to have a talk. It happens to be in front of a chemist shop. It was just a coincidence. It could have been outside any shop. I know how it must look to you. I'm taking treatment. You know I am. But I haven't been in trouble again. There are no new marks. I could take a look. I don't care. Tully, check his arm. <sighs> Let's have a jacket, then. So, could you uh, roll up your sleeves, please? Just a few old needle marks, Sergeant. Nothing new. Now do you believe me? Can I go now? Me old woman's expecting me home. She worries. Worries about you? She gave up worrying a long time ago. Sit down. And you haven't answered my question. What were you doing outside the shop? You think I was going to break in, don't you? To get some stuff. But I wasn't. We were talking, that's all. And you're not going to do me for talking. What were you talking about? Oh, God, you've got it wrong. We were just talking. About friends, about anything. Me old woman looks after me now, Mr Brooke. I'm being cured. Don't set it all back, please. I've never given you trouble. When I was caught, I always try to help you. You know that. Do I? Yes. All right. Let's see if you can help me now. Forget about tonight and tell me this. Where is your friend Cavill? Paul Cavill. How many Cavills do you know? He isn't a friend. Go on. I used to work in his car showroom, that's all. You used to run errands for him. When did you last see him? How could I see him? You sent him away. He's in jail. Isn't he? He was in jail, Billy. He appealed. He was given bail. He scarpered last week. Have you seen him? <sighs> I only saw him when he was on bail. I haven't seen him since, I swear it. Did he speak to you? Yeah. About what? Just to say hello. Ask how I was. Oh, don't give me that, Billy. There's a warrant out. Coppers are looking for him. He's not going to wander around saying, hello, how are you? What did he want from you? You could be in trouble. It was nothing. Just to take a message for him. When was this? On Wednesday. That was the day he skipped. <laughs> are you sure you haven't seen him since? Nobody's seen him since. Who was the message to? His girlfriend. Do you know what the message said? I'm paid to run messages, not read them, Mr Brooke. Where does his girlfriend live? I don't know. I had to wait outside Tesco's and give her the message there, that's all. So you know her? Yeah. What's her name? Janet. You can do better than that. No, I know her just as Janet. Look, she used to live with him, but she moved out when he went to jail. How do you know she moved? We know she moved. How do you know she moved? Because he gave you her address, didn't he? No. I thought you always helped me. You're not being very helpful, are you, Billy? I need that address. Yeah, all right. It's near the park. How near? Woodside Place. The number? Four. How often did you go there? Only twice. And did you see him before the Wednesday? Yeah, once. When? The Saturday before at White Hart Lane. The Tottenham Arsenal game. He's a Spurs fan, never misses a match. He meets all his friends there, bought me a couple of drinks, that's all. OK, Billy. That's it. Your old woman's waiting. 
Can I go? Yeah, yeah. Push off and take your mate. Oh, thanks, Mr. Brook. <sighs> hmm. He's scared. Yeah. Was that why you lifted him? About Cavill? I didn't lift him. I asked him to come and answer some questions. About a chemist shop? About anything I want to ask, and don't be so bloody nosy. No, Sergeant. Let's get back to CID. Get me Paul Cavill's file. Right. This one here? Yeah. That's Cavill, and that's his girlfriend. Take a look. You'll know her if you see her. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Her name is Janet Yates, also calls herself Janet Stevens. We have her new address. You get a car, go there and keep watch. What, now? Now. And you watch the house all night. See if anyone arrives or leaves, especially Cavill. Is that important? To me, he's very important. So don't make any mistakes. And if I see him? You tell me and you tell him. Where will you be? Right here. All night? All night. Look, um, can I say something? Yeah. About the interview room. Interrupting and everything. I'm sorry. Do you know why you should be sorry? Yeah, yeah, I know. But get going. Night. <laughs> morning, Dad. Yeah, yeah, morning. What time is it? Early turns coming on. Oh, hell. Uh, control room, please. You look rough. Yeah. Control room, who is it? Uh, Sergeant Brooke. Has there been anything in the night from DC Tully in Delta 3? Hold on. Yes, there was a message at 0812. Uh. The girl has left the house alone and he's still on watch. Yeah, well, raise him. Tell him uh, he'll be relieved in about ten minutes. Will do. Jim? Yeah? Tully's watching the house up by the park. Can I have someone to take over from you? Sure. Uh, Matthew soon? Yes, sir. Job for you. Uh, Tully's on watch in Delta 3, Woodside Place. Relieve him and tell him to report here. Yes, Sergeant. What's it about? Cavill. Who else? You still think he's around? Well, he has to be. His pals owe him money. Pals owe him favours. If he's on the run, he needs both. He's been gone three days, Dave. He could be in Spain, Greece, Hong Kong, anywhere but here. He wouldn't stay. I could kill that bloody brief of his. I regret to inform the court that my client has not surrendered to bail. His sodding client had scarpered and he knew it. And you think you can pick up the pieces? Yeah. How's the old man taking it? Inspector Roach. He's being pushed by the gumshoes at the yard. To them, every complaint against a detective sergeant is true. I'm going to find Cavill. Make him do the five years. Oh, he won't do any good, Dave. Whose side are you on? Watch it. Mr Roach is back, and he is your DC. Right. You've been here all night, Sarge. Yeah. What happened? Uh, well, Miss Yates was at home when I got there. I light on in the bedroom until just before three. Then it went out. Was he there? Well, if he was, would they keep the bedroom light on until three? Come on, Tully, I'm not in the mood. Sorry. I think she was alone, probably just reading. What else? Uh, it was all quiet until seven. Then the bedroom curtains opened. She looked out at the weather, went off to make breakfast, I suppose, and just after eight, the front door opened and she came out, alone. And he wasn't in the house? No. You can see through walls, can you? No, Sarge, it's what I think. She came out, locked the door, put the key in her handbag, Walked away, didn't look back, like she was going to work. Have some breakfast and get back on watch. Oh, I'm asleep on my feet, Sarge. I've been on duty 20 hours You're now. You're on duty until Cavill's found. And where will you be? Out looking for him too. Get some breakfast and don't hang around here. Oh, is there something wrong with me? Why? Well, nothing I do is right. I come into a room, he shouts at me. I'm on watch all night and I... Tully, there's a saying in CID, a good one. It says, if you can't get on with your governor, it's your fault. If I can't get on with Mr Roach, it's my fault. If you can't get on with yeah, your sergeant... Yeah, 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 I know all about that. I've worked with two sergeants. When they were rough, I knew why. And this time you don't. That's right. Uh, you said get some breakfast. Come on, I'll join you. I'll tell you about Sergeant Brooke and her Mr Cavill. <laughs> you going to eat all that lot? Sure. You must have an appetite like a horse. Well, he works me like one, doesn't he? Where do we start? Uh, this bloke Cavill. Yeah. Well, he's been getting away with it for years. Fingers in all sorts of crime. Yeah. And with the money from it, he was getting too big. Owns four garages, a car auction, and a big car showroom in the high street. Mm, yeah, I've seen it. Real smart place. Mm, it's the best. So on the one side, he's respectable. On the other, we know he's still into crime. You can finish with assault. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. Tell. Took Dave Brooks six months to get the evidence on him. Evidence that'd stick. Like? 
Among other things, he was bankrolling a team of car thieves. Oh, Cars stolen to order. This year's, last year's. Switched, resprayed, put in his showroom or sold at his car auction. Yeah. Took another three months to prepare the charges and get him into court. Trial lasted a week. He was well defended. He can afford the best. They've had a hard time, but he won. Cabell got five years. Have you read the file yet? Not yet, no. Well, he was no sooner in jail than his lawyer prepared an appeal. You know what's needed for that. Misdirection or new evidence? No, new evidence. Yeah. And the new evidence suggests, at the least, that your sergeant had not been telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Bloody hell. That's what it's all about. Is it true? Who knows? Dave Brooks a good detective, but sometimes he thinks he knows best. You want the sugar? Oh, yeah, please. Well, leave to appeal was granted. Cavill was bailed. Jumped bail and disappeared. Now there's a complaint against your sergeant at the yard. It doesn't give him the right to jump on me, Sarge. Yes, Tully, I'm afraid it does. You'll have to put up with it. Now finish your coffee. Matheson, come on, open up. Sorry, Sergeant. Has Tully shown up? Not yet. Get this muck off the seat, will you? Sorry, Sarge, I was having a snack. <clears throat> Has she come back? No. Any callers? Uh, the milkman and the postman. One pint, two letters. Any movement at the windows? Like an empty house. Yeah. Well, when Tully takes over, tell him to park on the other corner. Then he won't draw too much attention. Yes, Sergeant. Yeah, Dave. Two sandwiches and a pint. Thanks, Jim. You look all in. Yeah, well, I'm knackered. Well, why don't you get some sleep? If I close my eyes, Jim, that sod cavil will walk in here and walk out again, I know it. He's gone, Dave. He'll pick him up in France or somewhere. Let them worry. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Your DC has been complaining about you. As long as my DC does what he's told, I don't give a toss. I filled him in on you and Cavill. I'll go easy on him, Dave. Remember, he's new. Yeah, OK, OK. Look, tomorrow's Saturday, Jim. I'd like some DCs if you can spare them. Anyone who fancies seeing a cup tie. Which one? At White Hart Lane, Tottenham and Manchester United. You still think Cavill might Look, be... Look, it's only been three days, since Wednesday. He has some mates to meet before he leaves, cash to call in. It's the one place he might still risk meeting them, lose himself in the crowds. OK, you can have them. Until the match is over. No longer. I did. The club will let us use this commentary box. You'll get a good view of most of the ground from here. Any sightings yet, Superintendent? No. The game's started, gates are closed, but your man hasn't been seen yet. Now, this is his picture, hmm? Yes, sir. That's Cavill. Are you sure he'll be here? He has friends to square before he goes away. I'm told he usually meets them in the crowd. Well, take the binoculars and have a look. Thank you, sir. If he's squaring friends, he won't be in the reserved seats, that's for sure. No, sir. No. He'll be on the terraces. I have three DCs searching for him. Well, in that mob, it'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack. That's why he comes here, sir. No, no, I can't see him. They all look alike from up here. I'd rather be down there amongst them. OK, we'll keep on watching up here. Tully! Yes, Sarge? Seen anything? Only a lot of yobs shouting, that's all. I caught sight of Billy Dale for a jiff, but he vanished into the crowds over that way somewhere. All right, let's go down and look. Billy, over here. We've been looking all over for you, Mr. Cavill. No one knew where you were. How's the gun? We lighted a one up, but we're still in with a chance. Did you go to the auction room? Yeah. Mr. Anderson said the money wouldn't all be in until evening. Oh, did he? Well, there's two more things, Billy. Take this message to Anderson, and then take this one to Janet. Yes, sir. All right if I stay till half time? OK, but stay away from me. Go somewhere else. Yes, Mr. Cavill. How was the game? Ugh, waste of time. He didn't show. He wasn't seen at the turnstiles, wasn't seen on the terraces, but he was there. I could sense it. Yeah. The invisible man. Well, his friends were there. So was Billy Dale. I saw him creeping out at half-time. Hmm. Here's a message for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, while you're at the match, a car called at the girlfriend's house, driven by a lad from the car auction. The girl come out with a heavy suitcase. More like a travelling case. Heavy. And they drove off. Where? Victoria. She put the case in left luggage and went home again. I've put a watch on the left luggage and on the house. Something's moving, Jim. I knew it. Have you finished with the DCs? Yeah. I'll do the rest on my own. There's someone I want to see tonight. Well, what a surprise. I've been looking for you, Billy. Oh, it's you. Where are you off to, Billy? Just walking. 
Looking for someone? If you have to know, I'm going to buy some jeans. Late shopping, are you? Mind if I come along? Do you have to? Yeah. How was the match, Billy? What match? Oh, come on, Billy. White Hart Lane. We saw you there. Saw Mr Cavill, did you? Mr Cavill? I've told you before, I haven't seen him since last Wednesday. I'm going in here. A bit noisy, isn't it? Yeah. Not your style, Mr Brook. You won't like it. Well, I do lots of things I don't like. I thought you said you wanted jeans, Billy. They're over here. Not by the back exit. All right, Mr Brook. Is this what you're after? I'm just looking. Oh, I was saying, Billy, while you were at the match, Mr Cavill's girlfriend took a suitcase to Victoria. Is he going somewhere? Out of the country, perhaps? The channel ports? Maybe she's going somewhere. If she was, she wouldn't leave her case at the station and go back home, would she? I don't know what she'd do. Why did you leave at half-time? Because I didn't like the game. And look, Mr Brook, I want to try these things on, right? Are you going to follow me into the changing room? People might get the wrong idea. Yeah, well, we wouldn't want that, would we, Billy? No, Mr Brook. Remember, if you're lying to me about Cavill, I won't be pleased, will I? No, Mr Brook. Oh, uh, come in, Billy. What happened? You're late. I was held up, Mr Cavill. And I had trouble finding this place. Well, I'm not going to provide an AA route map, am I? So the old Bill can find me. Well, did you see Anderson? Yeah, and I've got the money for you. Here it is. Oh. I thought I wasn't going to make it. Oh? Why? That copper, Sergeant Brook, had to get rid of him. He's been putting the pressure on, wants to know if I'm seeing you. Yeah. You sure you weren't followed? No chance, Mr Cavill. I was too careful. So what did you tell him? I said I haven't seen you, of course. Good lad. I shan't bother you again. There's nothing more to collect. Everything's in and tomorrow I really will be gone. You've done a good job. Here's uh, something for you. 200 quid. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Mr Cavill. Oh, by the way, uh, when Brooks saw you, what did he say? Not much. He knows something's up. He knows Janet took the case to Victoria. He knows that? Yes, Mr Cavill. He says she left it at the station. And she left to get it back. Sorry, Billy, this changes my travel plans. There's one last job for you. You must get to Janet and No, ask Mr Cavill, I can't do that. Why not? They must be watching her. If Brooke hears I've gone there, he'll know I've seen you. He'll jump on me. All right, Billy. I'll tell you what. Go back to the car auction. You said I'd finish, Mr Cavill. This one is easy. Anderson will still be in the office. Just tell him to go to the station and collect the case. You could phone him. He's got to have the left luggage ticket. You get it from Janet. No. There's another 50 quid for you. All you do is tell him to collect, and I'll phone him later. All right, Mr Cavill. Good lad. Tommy, I'm not used to waiting on freezing street corners. What kept you? I'm oh, sorry, Mr Brook. I missed the bus here. So, what have you got to tell me? Well, it's about Cavill. He's still in town. Who says? Oh, some of the punters who owe him money. The cash is being called in and passed on to him. And it has to be cash and no excuses. How do you know? Well, now the bloke what's doing the collecting. Who? Boy, oh, a young bloke used to work for him. Dale. Billy Dale? Yeah. Well, I'll be damned. He was at the showroom this morning and the car auction. Backwards and forwards like a blue arse fly. Thanks, Tommy. You'll see me all right, Mr. Brook. If what you say is kosher, you'll get your payment. Oh, oh thanks very much, Mr. Brook. I'm sorry I was a bit late. Jim. Yes, Dave. I was right. Cavill is still with us and getting ready to go. He's calling in his debts. Do we still have a watch on that suitcase? We had, but it was collected an hour ago at eight o'clock. By Cavill? No, by a man called Anderson, the manager of his auction room. Matheson saw it. Well, didn't he stop him? Well, how could he? Oh, dear. It's in the car park of a pub in Kensington. Tully's watching it. Right, I'll join him. Oh, and Jim, send a uniformed man to pick up Billy Dale. I want a word with him. Right, Dave. OK, Tully, move over. Right, Sergeant. <coughs> so, what's new? It's still there. The suitcase? Yeah. It's in the boot of the green jag at the end of the row. Can you see it? Over there in the shadow. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. And the owner of the jag? 
A Mr. Anderson. I checked. Mm. He's waiting in the saloon bar, playing with a gin and tonic and trying not to drink too much. How long has he been there? About an hour. Has he had any visitors? No, but he's been on the phone twice. If you want to look at the suitcase... No, no, I'll no, just... we leave it where it is. Keep our eye on it. Right. Wait for the real owner to come for it. You're determined to get him, aren't you? Yeah, he's a villain. It's more than that, isn't it? I talked with Jim Harrison. More like a grudge. It's a job. They say his appeal has put you in stuck. No. If he gets away with it, I'm in stuck. If I can cop him, the appeal will be dropped. It's a phony. You'll see. How do you know Cavill will come? I don't, but either he comes for the suitcase or the suitcase will be taken to him. What's in it? Cash. He's getting ready for a new life, selling out. If they take off in that jag, this old banger won't keep up. The clutch is nearly gone. It was the only unmarked car left. Hey, look. Could be Mr Anderson's got a visitor. Just arriving, the blue Renault. It's a woman. Looks like the girlfriend. Yeah, it is. Janet Yates. On her own. No cavil. Do I follow her in? No, no, no. We stay with the cash. Wherever it goes, we go. Hey, keep your eyes on that Renault, Tully. I think there could be somebody else in it. You think? I saw something move just now, did you? No. Look, should we take a look? Wait, here comes the girl again. With Anderson. They're making for the Renault. You're right. Hey, I saw something move too. See, look. When the inside light went on, it's Cavill. Yeah. He was waiting there all the time. Well, what do we do? Drive past him like we were leaving. Cavill was getting out of the car. He's making for the Jag. He keeps looking back, Sarge. He spotted us. Cut him off, now! Cavill! Hold it right there! Tully! Get his hand! You all right, Sarge? Yeah, I've got him. Put the cuffs on. Didn't expect to see me again, did you, Cavill? No, I didn't, Brooke. I've got a warrant for your arrest. Oh, no, I know. All right, Sergeant. No more fuss, no more trouble. Let's go now. Get it over with. No, there's something else I want. Something in the boot of that jack. Tully, go over. Get the car keys from Anderson. And while you're there, caution him and the girl. We'll see them later. Right, Sergeant. You don't give up, do you? No, Cavill, I don't. You were lucky. Heading for the continent, were you? I think you can jump bail. I'm not saying anything till I've seen my solicitor. You're going to need more than that, Cavill, where you're going. Ah, oh, stuff it, Sergeant. Here's the case, Sarge. Oh, I didn't know money could be so heavy. Into the car with it. And you, Cavill. In after it. <laughs> Sergeant Brooke was played by Ray Brooks and Detective Constable Tully by Stephen Garlick. Detective Sergeant Harrison, Peter Cleal, Tommy, Michael Ripper, Billy Dale, David Milner, Paul Cavill, Douglas Blackwell, Inspector, Arnold Diamond, Detective Constable Matheson and Police Constable Peter Aker. Detective was written by Robert Barr and produced by Martin Fisher.